Sting is a new horror flick about a giant killer spider lurking in an old apartment building. Sting. Now, let's get it out of the way since there's a giant spider involved. It only makes sense to compare it to eight-legged freaks. Get back to eight-legged freaks! But the two have less in common than you'd think. Eight-Legged Freaks embraced the absurdity of its premise. It was over the top in almost every way, which made it a great horror comedy. It knew exactly what it was and what it wanted to be. And I can't say the same for Sting. Because it likes to feed <laughs> on living flesh. This movie was a mixed bag of a lot of genres. It absolutely had elements of horror and comedy, which is to be expected. I mean, a premise about a giant spider can only get you so far without some comic relief. But for some reason, Sting also tried telling a very complex story with nuanced characters, which is interesting for a horror movie. But what ended up happening was I walked out of it not really knowing what I watched. The movie didn't seem to have a clear vision. But before I get into too much of the negatives, let me start with what I think was well done. The horror was on point. Come on, Sting. This is a rated R movie, and you could tell. When it goes there, it goes there. I mean, we're talking crawling into people and then eating them from the inside out. And this is important to me. A lot of the horror effects here are practical. Not everything. There's still some CGI here, but enough of it was done using actual puppets and prosthetics to make me a very happy person. Now, this could be just my age. I am old enough to remember back when movies only used practical effects, and this could just be nostalgia talking. But I admit, I like seeing the actors actually engaging with real things and having actual blood spurt into their faces. These little touches all come together to make horror that much better. So if you only come through to watch this for the horror, you won't be disappointed. Now, even though the horror elements are good here, I think it's important to mention that these moments are relatively few and far between. It seemed to me like they kept the R-rated stuff to a minimum in the hopes of making a PG-13 version for TV. Now, I really hope I'm wrong and we actually get an unrated version down the line that really takes the horror to the next level. But as the movie stands now, it feels like it was holding back. The opening to this movie by far is the best opening I've seen in a very long time. Ooh. You sure about that? Within just the first few minutes, the whole situation and characters are all introduced so perfectly in such a unique way. We meet this old lady who hears sounds coming from inside the walls of her apartment. She calls an exterminator, but when she has to consult notes to remind her of her own name and address, we realize that she's got some memory problems. So it's not surprising that by the time the exterminator shows up, she forgot she ever called them. You called about the noises in your walls, right? Oh, no, 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 not me. You sure about that? In fact, she doesn't even remember that this is the second exterminator she called. But by the time the new exterminator realizes what's going on, it's too late. <laughs> and the old lady, of course, just carries on as if nothing ever happened. I love this whole premise. In fact, that's your movie right there. I just imagined it started with this woman calling her neighbor to investigate some weird sounds. Then she calls another neighbor, then the manager, then a couple of exterminators. All the while, this giant spider is having a giant feast. Eventually, neighbors start to get suspicious seeing people go into this old lady's apartment, but never coming back out, so they call the police. But the police who investigate, of course, go missing too, and suddenly, this lady is suspected of being some sort of serial killer. More police show up, but they go missing too. Even the SWAT team's taken out. Eventually, the whole building is evacuated, and it's surrounded by police and government officials. News stations all over the country are reporting on this 
killer grandma. Investigators are working feverishly to come up with some sort of motive. A hostage negotiator is shouting in with a bullhorn, pleading with her to please let the people go and give herself up. All the while, she's just inside watching TV. With a giant spider she has no idea exists eating everybody in sight. That could be your whole movie right there. And the way it started, it really seemed like that would be the general direction. But the movie ends up going in a much more conventional direction when we flash back a few days and meet the main character, Charlotte. She's the one who finds the spider and more or less keeps it as a pet until it grows too large to contain. Now, it's through Charlotte that the movie attempts to deliver some drama and character development. And this is where the movie just completely dropped the ball. I think if Charlotte and her whole family were removed from the movie altogether, it would have gotten a lot better. But before I get into the hows and the whys, I want to invite you to come and check out my second channel where I live stream video games every week. The channel is called Too Bad About Kenny. That's with the number two. There you'll find my playthroughs of SnowRunner, Mario Wonder, Robocop, Rogue City. I even teamed up with some friends for a playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> you just shut the door on him. <laughs> he put a barrel what? in front. What? And I'm putting this fire barrel here, so you know if you want to pop that. And most recently, I just started Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown. Ooh, you see that block right there? Oh yeah. Now, if you prefer your live streams through Twitch, I also stream there using the same name, and I'll include that link as well. So if you're a fan of live streams and video games, stop by, say hello. I'd love to chat with you there. So anyway, back to Charlotte and her family drama that ruined the entire movie for me. Charlotte's parents were recently divorced and her dad left them. The mom's new boyfriend, Ethan, does his best to build a relationship with Charlotte, but she's of course hesitant. Ethan, though, is a comic book artist, which interests Charlotte. So Ethan actually lets her sit in on his work sessions to offer some advice. It's a sweet way to include her, and she enjoys being able to express herself artistically. She eventually starts to warm up to Ethan, which creates some internal conflict. You know, what does it mean for her to actually like this guy who is supposed to be the one replacing her father? This is good. Okay, I like having characters going through complicated situations and struggling with conflicting emotions. The problem is this is a horror movie that doesn't really have the time or energy to develop this whole situation and it ends up feeling out of place and the characters end up shallow. Charlotte is basically just portrayed as a whiny, bossy little brat. She's always yelling at her parents and talking down to them and Ethan and her mom aren't any better. They just let her walk all over them. I kept waiting for them to draw the line somewhere, but they just let her do whatever she wants. So they just come off as pushovers that I really don't enjoy either. Also, throughout most of the movie, Charlotte is under the impression that her dad moved out of the country after the divorce, which is why he never comes to visit. But it turns out he actually just lives across town. He could visit any time, he just doesn't want to. I mean, that seems overly harsh for no reason. The movie never makes an effort to address that. It doesn't offer any closure. It's just, oh, your dad doesn't want to visit you. That's it. There's no redemption here. He never comes back to help. Charlotte never tries to find him. It's just brought up and forgotten. And these problems are all, I think, a result of the movie just doing too much. If it had just been a horror comedy, I think that would have been fine, maybe even great. But they insisted on also giving us this underdeveloped family story with a bunch of unlikable characters and subplots that never resolve. So unless you're a horror fan, I can't recommend this movie to you. And as a horror fan, I could tell you that this is something that I will not be adding to my collection. I recommend streaming it or renting it. Otherwise, don't bother. Thanks for watching my review of Sting, and don't forget to check out my second channel, as well as my Twitch. Bye. A giant spider loose in a building. Evil Dead Rise, but with a spider. Too bad about Kenny, huh? Life in a big city.